Awesome. I love it. It might be cold outside, but it's warm in here. Come on. We got some warm hearts. <laughs> An elderly gentleman used to always uh, say that to me at the front door. Cold hands, a warm heart. I thought that was so sweet. <laughs> but yes, how awesome is it that we get to come together every week and celebrate our king. You know, there are places in the world where they can't do this. They have to go underground. And I'm always reminded what a privilege this is. It is a privilege. So when we're feeling cold and chilly and think, oh, I just want to stay in bed, you know what? Just be, be reminded that there are some places where they wish they could do this. And so it is a privilege and honor and a joy to be together and worship our king, huh? But I'm expecting for this word. And, you know, I read that scripture out of Luke 4 in, the, in um, a little moment earlier. And it, th that is the word that the Lord has given us for us this year. And we are being released for purpose so that we can see the captives set free. Amen? And so there are three things we are focusing on, just as a refresher for those that are jumping on with us at this point. But out of that released for purpose, there are three things we want to focus on this year. And can anyone remember what it is? There we go. That's right. Amen. Come on. <laughs> so I'll shout that out again. We are being released in prayer. It's not just a momentary thing, but a lifestyle of prayer to evangelize, which is just to share the good news of our Lord Jesus, and to release leaders as we grow as disciples of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I just thought I would take that moment just to remind us again and have that in our hearts. And so this month, the month of April, anyone like, how is it April already, right? <laughs> I'm an April baby. Uh, come on, who's my April, who's my April babies? Come on, give us a wave, come on. Yes, April babies, strong. <laughs> Am I right? Don't say yes. <laughs> Amen. And, and in the month of April, we are talking about share Jesus, share hope. And for those that have been listening, have you been enjoying it? Has it been encouragement? Lo uh, the first week, Pastor Tam spoke about looking in to go out. What a powerful message. And I know so many people were encouraged by that. And last week, Pastor Bruce spoke, uh, challenged us about obedience and dis, sorry, obedience and conviction. What are you convicted by? Are you, do you have a heart for what's going on around you? Do you see what's going on? And then next week, uh, we have Pastor Byron, our national AOG leader, coming to be with us. So I encourage you, come along. You don't want to miss that. He has got such a heart for, for the lost and the good news. Um, and he's got so many wonderful testimonies. So I encourage you to come to that. But this week, today, my message is called, Any Witnesses? <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Can I get a witness? <laughs> come on. <laughs> and so... The question is asked, are there any witnesses in the room? Are there any witnesses in the room? Now, has anyone been in a situation where they've been called in to be part of a court case because they, were, they had to be a witness in a situation? You don't have to raise your hand. Maybe you're still under protection. <laughs> Just maybe. Just keep it there. Um, <laughs> and... Um, but we had a situation a while back where we were driving out of the church basement and a driver that was on the other side decided, no, he wanted a parking spot back there and just without looking reverse backwards. And so as we came up and he came flying back, his car connected with ours. And all of a sudden we all jumped out the car. And you know that feeling if you've ever had an uh, interaction like this, it's, it's traumatizing. <laughs> You're like, oh my goodness, this is what, what happened. And so he was very apologetic, very quickly saying, I'm so sorry, uh, this was my fault. I take responsibility. And then you go, okay, you know, like they're gonna take responsibility, right? Well, not right. <laughs> Um, he, once we tried to get hold of him and phone him, he actually, um, it, we didn't know this was actually his dad's car and he had lied to his dad to say actually it was their fault. And so his dad just put his foot down and was like, no, it is your fault, you caused this accident. And of course that righteous anger comes up in you and you're like, ah. 
And so, but unfortunately, we couldn't take it any further because we were told you need a witness. Okay. And for all my lawyer friends out there, <laughs> how, how strong is it of a case to have a witness, right? A witness is extra, it adds extra weight, and it's someone for account for what they saw. But um, don't worry, there's no situation, I, no cases that I'm talking about at the moment, but what I'm talking about is a different witness today, okay? And so now I will ask, are there any witnesses to the love and grace of Jesus in your life? And you can raise your hand for me. Come on. Amen. Amen. This is the kind of witness I'm talking about. And if you can just give a little bit of house lights so I can see your beautiful faces. <laughs> so I have a question. Is going and sharing the good news about Jesus with people only for people who are gifted to evangelize? Mm. And for those that were at, we had Pastor Fabian come and share yesterday at our leaders' equipment. He touched on this, um, but the answer is no. And so many times we see in the Bible of people being encouraged to stand in their faith and to not give up sharing their faith. And so in 1 Peter 3 verse 15, it says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Philemon 1, 6 says, I pray that the sharing of your faith, the sharing of your faith may become eff effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. That is the sharing of our faith. Paul was not just writing to Philemon and his wife, and the congregation, but he was also writing to the congregation members. That's you and I. So it is not just for the specially gifted. He, we are all being asked to share our faith and to share this good news, right? Do you know that your life is also being a witness? Do you know that your life is evangelizing? Matthew 5 verse 15 to 16 says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in that house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. We are not called to, once we get this beautiful news, this joy, this wonderful encounter with Jesus, and then to bury it and hide it. And I hope that no one sees or notices this change. No, it is wonderful news that we put on a lampstand and a light for everyone to see. And sometimes we don't realize that our living lives are an example. And can either point people to Christ or not. And so how we behave and the things we choose to take part in affects whether that happens. And so... I was, a rem I was reminded of a moment uh, at the gym, when I was at the gym about two or three years ago in one of my classes, I was doing a class, and after the class, the, the instructor w went around, we were just cooling down, stretch was over, and uh, he went around and gave out tarot cards. Now, for those of you who don't know what tarot cards are, they're um, supposedly like reading your, your past and future, and, um, and so I didn't take one. Uh, and so I was one of the only people in the class that didn't take one. I didn't think uh, anyone noticed, and I went to the change room. But one of the girls that was changing there turned to me and said, I noticed you didn't take one. Can I ask you why? And it was a moment for me to say to her, yes, because I'm, I'm a believer, and I love Lord, the Lord Jesus, and he's the one that has given me my hope and can lead me and guide me in my future. And it was a moment to, to share that hope with her. And, um, and so with that being said, though, we are not, sometimes that weight can also crush us. We think we're 
they live perfect lives, but the truth is we are going to mess up sometimes. And so I don't want that to, to, to d- sometimes the enemy can get in our head and think, oh, well, you've messed up, so you can't, your life can't be a witness anymore. No, the truth is we are going to mess up, but we can, we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us, right? We can say, Lord, help us to live the way you want me to be so that my life can be a witness for you every day. And so we have these opportunities to point people to Jesus. Hebrews 10 verse 22 says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that brings faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and that having bodies washed with pure water. And this scripture reminds me that as people we come to Christ in different ways. You know, all of our stories are different. Your journey of coming to Christ is different. It might, it's not going to be the same as the person next to you, but when we, draw ne- when we draw near to him, it happens through our heart, our mind, and our conscience. Our minds start to be curious about this God, and we ask questions. Our conscience might lead us on a path, but ultimately, we are impacted by the love of Jesus, and our hearts are moved by this love. And that is a testimony that no one can take away from you. And so as you are sharing that with people, know that your story has an impact. Your testimony of God's goodness is important. So don't hold it to yourself. You can share that with others. And we need to be praying for evangelism. We need to be praying. People, you know, we've spoken about this. We are going deeper in our prayer life this year, church. We need to pray for us as believers to be witnesses. Matthew 9, verse 37 to 38 says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Ask the Lord of the harvest. This scripture reminds me that there there is ripe fruit ready, hearts that are willing to accept Jesus, but the issue is the workers. In other words, not enough people to go and share this good news. So we need to ask. As we make prayer a lifestyle, We need to be praying regularly for the lost. Because you know what that does? It gives us a heart for the lost. We begin to see them as Jesus does. We begin to be reminded, because as Pastor Fabian reminded us yesterday, we can get so self-centered. We can be on this journey, and it's wonderful that we have Jesus. It's wonderful that we are going to heaven. It's wonderful. But sometimes then on the journey, we, we kind of, it's like, okay, cool, I'm good. And I'm talking about me too. We can get selfish and set in our ways and be, not be reminded that there are others that do not know him yet. And so... As we are praying, God gives us a heart for the lost. And we we need to ask him to be a vessel. The late Pastor Donovan, our previous national leader, he, this was his biggest heart. He used to ask all the leaders every Wednesday, every Wednesday pray for the workers. Every Wednesday. Maybe that's something you can grab a hold of and take every Wednesday. But to pray, pray for the workers that are going, that is you and I. I know that you think it's just up here. <laughs> Nobody thinks that here, not at, not at Life Church. It's not just here. It's not just me and Pastor Bruce and Pastor Tam. It is you and I. It is everybody taking part, linking hands. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to, in your, in your mind, See people that you know in your oikos, in your surroundings, in your community that don't yet know Jesus. I want you to picture them. 
And I want you to open your eyes. I want you to picture them in this room. First of all, we would have no space. And that's really, it's not about that. But it is possible with God. We need to be believing for those people. Don't stop praying. I've heard testimonies of people saying, my grandmother prayed for me for 20 years. And today, I found the good news of Jesus. And today, I will live for him. Don't stop praying for people. What a privilege it is that we get to share this hope. Sometimes we will know that what we shared had an impact. Sometimes it'll be immediate. Sometimes you will see it. But sometimes we may not. But all of heaven rejoices when one life comes to him. Every life matters to God. Every single life. And all of heaven throws a party when one person comes to know him. So we need to be a people that hear and go. Let's turn in our Bibles to Acts 8 verse 29 to 36. And I say turn because sometimes it's good to have paper (laughs) with us. Your phones are okay too. Actually, just a small testimony on that. I have no problem with phones, reading the phone. Bible on our phones, it's wonderful. But I was convicted, um, this is in my notes, but uh, was it yesterday or the day before we were sitting at a coffee shop and um, we were chatting with a gentleman um, about various things and um, my husband continued the conversation but I was uh, continuing reading the word and so I, I had my digital phone out with me but I had my Bible in my bag and I felt God say, take it out and read the, the paper. And so I did that and I was like, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, okay, I could just have been reading it on my phone, but okay. And um, I'm reading and I start highlighting and writing my book. And my husband had stepped out to go and this gentleman was watching. He was watching and I felt God say, it's deposited something. And he said to us before he left, he said, it is wonderful what you're doing because Bruce had an opportunity to to share, but I just, I I won't know what that was, but I felt I was listening to to the Lord, and I feel, and he had a smile on his face, and I don't know, maybe he previously had a Bible, I don't know, but I pray that the Lord would do something with it, with him. Anyway, that was a side note. Acts 29 verse, uh, sorry, Acts 8, 29 to 36. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news of Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? Amen. Come on. He gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water, and Philip baptized him. What we can see from this passage is that Philip listened and obeyed the Holy Spirit. The Spirit told Philip, and he went, and he, he was told to go near the chariot, and he did so, and he waited there, and then the opportunity happened, and he spoke with the man, and um, I, didn't, I didn't have this in my notes, but while we were in, earlier in worship, I, I just felt God say that some of you, when you're listening, you're needing you, creative ways 
to go near. Because some situations are difficult to go near. Maybe even I've maybe even a situation where you've been told you cannot share the gospel here. You cannot share about Jesus and the door is closed. You're needing a creative way to go near and be invited in because that's what happened. He went near and he was invited into a conversation. And so God is wanting to bring creative ways to you to go near. He didn't just hear, but he took action. Will you step up and speak and have a conversation with people that don't know him? Are you, okay, are you okay with uncomfortable conversations? I know for a long time I struggled with this. I struggled with being an uncomfortable conversation. But God taught me it is okay. You don't need to be the bashing person over the head. In fact, that's maybe not the best way. You can share in love. You can, sh- you can have an uncomfortable conversation and discuss things without losing your cool. <laughs> and it's okay. But we need, to be unco- we need to be okay with the uncomfortable. Verse 30, Philip asks, do you understand what you are reading? And he answers in 31, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to speak with him. I spoke about how our lives will evangelize to people, but also our words. Our love and our words also need to evangelize to people. We need to speak. Romans 10 verse, oh, my notes are, sorry. I think it's 14 to 15, I have an error there. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. I really just feel that God wants to commission you today. Maybe someone can come up to play, but he's calling you. He is calling you. It is good news that we are bringing. It is not sad news. When we read in Luke 4, he came to set the captives free. This is freedom we are proclaiming. And sometimes there are things that trap us into not going. Maybe fear, fear of what will be said. Fear of rejection. Maybe you've got personal rejection hurt. And so by going, it just reinforces that that hurt. I don't know. Maybe you've had a bad experience. We are going to face some rejection. I think we should settle that. Not everyone is going to accept this news. But you know what? He wants us to go. Someone win. So you are here because somebody took the step out to share with you. I've been reading a book called Revival Reign, and he said this about the end times. And I just want to state that it is important to know what's going on, what the Word of God says about the end times, okay? I want to say that. But what he said is this, and I'm just summarizing what he said. He said, we can become so fixated on the the end times and the signs of the end times that we become more fixated on that and looking at those signs than we do going to the unreached people. Because in Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So this passage is telling us that we've got a mission first. So yes, we should know what's going on with the times, but let's not become more fixated and fearful, actually. Some people are going into bunkers because they're fearful about what's going on in the world. But actually, this should excite us to say there are still 
unreached people that need to know. I encourage you, I went, you can go to look at the Joshua Project online and they give you stats of like how many people in the world are still not reached. There might be someone sitting in this room that God's been nudging you to go to far missions. That's an uncomfortable thing. But if he goes with you, he'll be with you. And I just felt there's someone in the room that God is nudging to do that. But then there are also people that he's calling just to walk across a room and have a conversation. Or maybe to pick up a phone call with a family member. We need to be people that see heaven and see the people that we're believing for there. We should have a heart that no one would be lost, that everyone would go with us to heaven and enter his presence, that no one would experience not being in his presence. And yes, we know that not everyone will we'll say yes to that call, but we have the opportunity to give them that option. Lord, move my heart for your people. Move my heart. There's an African proverb that says, there is only one crime worse than murder on the desert, and that is to know where the water is and not tell. We know where the water is. We've got the greatest news in the world. Lord, help us to shine your light. Help us to put it out for all to see. And when we are afraid, Lord, give us your boldness and your strength. But I want to tell you, lastly today, that we cannot go and share without his power. In Acts 4 verse 33, it says, With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to stand in this moment. And I want, today I want to be, I want to pray for people who want to go, that want to be encouraged, that want His power to be bold to speak this good news. Or you want strength and you want the Holy Spirit to tell you how to live your life that would be an example for Him. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be a witness for Him. As we make this a daily prayer, I encourage you that we continue to pray, going out of here, that we won't be discouraged when we get that rejection, that we will never give up, that something today will carry with us that we will say, you know what, Lord, I will continue because I received the good news of your love. And I also want to pray for those, maybe you have not made the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe your, your mind has been creating curiosity. Maybe... Your conscience is telling you that something isn't, there's something that I don't understand you. There's something that isn't right. But today your heart has encountered the living God. That Jesus died for you personally. And that he loves you and he went to the cross and he rose again. 
so that you might have life with him and eternity with him. And so if you want to give your life to Jesus today, would you, would you just pray this prayer with me? And church, we can pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I know that I'm a sinner in need of your grace. Thank you for loving me. Today I receive you in my life. Make me more like you. Lead me all the days of my life. Today I surrender to you. Amen.